sorry. Hey guys, Naptop here, and I was just messing around here in the default setting of Premiere Pro, and I was looking at this workspace, and it's crazy. I updated my hard drive to an SSD drive. I'm super excited. It's a Samsung Evo, and now I'm SSD on my MacBook Pro 2012, and it is screaming. It's flying. It's doing all those things that fast things do. When I reformatted the hard drive, I had to download all the Creative Cloud software again, and I realized I lost all my workspace templates. When I loaded up Premiere Pro, I realized it's been a while since I've actually looked at this default setting. And those of you that are editing in this style, like that's great. I, this is great if you can figure out how to use this workspace. This is crazy workspace. I'm gonna show you my workspace and I'll explain a little bit of why I set it up that way. I'm gonna try to do it in less than eight minutes. We'll see what happens here. My sleeves are already rolled up, but let's roll them up again because we're really getting into this. So here we go. We got our preview window, we got our program window and all this stuff down here. First things first, what is all this? Media browser, don't need it, close it. Libraries, don't need it, close it. Info, nope. Effects, yes, we want that. Markers, I don't use those. History, that's history. So now we have this project workspace set up. We're gonna move this up here. All right, it's looking good. And those of you that are new to Premiere Pro, this right here is your preview area. You turn that off, you'll see it goes away. It might default and not show this. I'm gonna turn that on. If you don't see this on your default layout, it's called preview area. I like it and this is why. When you have a clip like this, this, you have all your information for that clip. It pops up right up there, it's cool. But this also lets you take a thumbnail of that clip. So if you go down here to the bottom of the left of this, you'll see these are your different views, similar to like folders and stuff like that. There's your thumbnail view. I'm gonna hold command and double click on that. It opens up inside there. And now this default, let's say I wanted it to be like right there or whatever. This is just a generic sample clip. Boom, I want that to be my thumbnail. And so now that is a reference to my clip, which is really useful if you have a lot of different clips for finding B-roll and stuff like that. And something else about this list view and thumbnail view, you have different options. You'll see this little tally right here show up, this sort icon, watch it disappear. You only have name order when you have it in list view, but when you have thumbnail view, you can do it by label, you can do it by name, media type. You have all these different options. It's crazy, I don't understand Premiere sometimes. But that's the layout for that, and you can see that lets you go back right there. And there's a lot of different folder stuff that uh, we could get into, but we'll just skip over that for right now. I'm gonna get into the layout. So we're getting our layout all set up. Next thing's next, media display. I just right click on that, media display. I'm saying media display, it's metadata display. Come on, Dave, get it together. All right, so in here we have all these things. I don't want any of these turned on, so I'm just gonna uncheck. Don't need it, don't need it, don't need it. Media duration, I want that, don't want that. Video duration, we don't need all that. Video info, nah, nope. Usage, yeah, that, those are the two we want. So I'm gonna uncheck these and we'll come back. I'm going through these really fast because I wanna get through this so you can just get an idea of the whole layout. So these are just a bunch of options and some of these options you might use for your editing. Check that out, right click on that and pull these up and see what you like. But these are the what I like. I like having media duration, audio usage and video usage. That looks good. We'll just stretch this over. So here's our three little columns. I like to put video usage first, then audio, and then media duration. And you'll see here, gives you the information right there. And I like to just crunch these down, because I know what they are. I see the V, I see the A, we're good to go. And then what this lets you do, those of you that are new to Premiere, check this out. Drag this to that little icon, pow, there's your new sequence and it uses the exact information off that clip. So that's how you make a new sequence really quick, if you didn't know that already. But you'll see right here, our video usage now is on one. If I bring that clip back to that timeline, every time we use that, it gives you that information. I think that's really useful for me. It helps me out for using B-roll because when you right click on that, or actually let's just pull this out a little bit. When you click on that, showing you where you've used the clips. How cool is that? So this is really helpful when you have tons of different B-roll clips and you're dropping them in and you're like, okay, I've used that same clip 30 times. And I've talked about this in older tutorials if you've watched my channel before. So we got that set up pretty nice. I like this little workspace area over here. Those of you that aren't familiar with this, right here we have our sequence. I don't want this in my assets bin. So I'm gonna drag this. If you ever need to get a clip or something out of a bin, just drag it a little bit to the left, click and drag, pops it right out. That took me a while to figure out. And I think you can do it to the right too. I think if you drag it this way, you'll see that little, that's how you do it. So you just kind of pull it away from the folder and it works. Premiere, Premiere. All right, so that looks good there. We got our, we got, that's our sequence. There's that. 
we want to make a new bin. Let's just call this sequence. This is just for me. I'm look, I'm already starting to set up my project. File management, that's the key to the game for editing no matter what software you're using. All right, so that's good. We got that. We're probably not going to get through this in eight minutes, so let's just keep rolling here. So now that we got our metadata display all set up, we have our folders right here. We have our little view set up, whether we want it in icon view or list view. There's that all good to go. So that's good. We don't have to touch that anymore. We're going to come over here to our preview window. Some of you might not use a preview window. This is, I still edit old school. I know some people that just completely close the window and they just use their thumbnail view as the preview window, similar to like how Final Cut X works, but I still use the preview window and I have the little effects tab. That's going to be good. We want that. Now this is what you want to get rid of this thing, audio clip mixer. I, I personally think this is useless. I'm going to close this, but before I do, let's see what this is. Metadata don't need that. But here's what I want to show you. See this audio clip mixer. This isn't what we want here. We want workspace. We want audio track mixer. Whoa. See that? That's what that looks like. And this is what this looks like. This is the major difference. Well, without going into the details, a lot of you might already know what this is. To simplify this, this is the clip mixer. This is the track mixer. The audio track mixer gives you options over the master track. So this audio track right here, this controls the levels for that entire track. It also, this is something that a lot of you might not know. These little things right here, this lets you put an effect over the entire track. This is really useful if you want to do like an echo effect. If you've ever had that where you drop the echo effect right on to a clip and as soon as it clips over, the echo stops. Put the echo effect in here, the reverb right here, put a little reverb and it'll reverb the entire line of audio. And then you'll have a, you'll have that reverberation last long after the clip is over. That's a little trick. That's for effects editing. But anyways, so this audio clip, we don't want this close it. We want track mixer. So now we got that. We got our little controls here and this twirls up so you can get that out of the way. And there you go. So now we got that looking good. We have our effects here with all of our effects looking good, looking good. All right. Now you can see, I'll just delete this here. You can see here on this, we'll go down to the timeline here. This is all pretty set up. I like the way this is set up. This right here is our uh, timeline tools. Those are good. I like those there, but you'll see our little audio reference. It's down here and it's like, eh, I don't know. Check this out. I like to put this thing right like that so I can see my audio. Look at that. There's some audio for you. No, let's shrink that down. <laughs> so this is purposely like this. I have this going up the entire side, not just to look cool, but when I'm playing my clips, when I'm watching a lot of clips, let's just drop a bunch of these. Oops. That's not how you do that. Just put a bunch of these clips down here when I'm watching my clips and I'm watching this preview monitor, my eye is right here at the same levels that I want the majority of my tracks to be instead of having to look down constantly to make sure my audio levels are right. I know that if I can see this in my peripheral vision close to negative four, negative five, just to below negative three, that's where I want my audio for me. That's just how I edit. And that allows me to keep that right there. How cool is that? This is looking nice. Now this is just something else. This is more of just my personal, uh, preference just to make it look cool. This is the time code. And I like to put that thing right there. There's absolutely no reason for this to be here, but I like to have it. So if somebody's ever walking by my computer and they see that, look at that, look at that. Look, just look at that whole window. It just looks like, man, you got some stuff going on over here. You know what you're doing. Those numbers are spinning down here. And this is actually really nice when those numbers are spinning. If you have somebody working with you and they're referencing time code as they're making edits, they can just kind of watch that number. It's nice and big, but it's not in the way. And it also just makes it look a little bit more high tech, totally trivial, but I like it. All right. We're almost there. We're almost there. Now we're in the timeline. We're still dealing with this stuff. There's something missing and I don't know why they default this. This is just crazy, but there is something. If you click on this little drop down, there's a work area bar. I work with that. That's how I work. <laughs> this allows you to move this little bar around and render certain areas. So if you have effects, you can stretch that. And you might remember this from older versions of Premiere. If you've used this in the past, I don't know why it disappears in the default editing layout. It's crazy. This is just crazy because this is really useful for me because what I like to do sometimes when someone says, how long is that these two clips together? Let's say we had some cool thing here and we had an edit. They're like, how long is this? You can just kind of stretch this over it. And when you hover over it, it gives you the duration right there. How cool is that? So that's a quick way to get durations of uh, areas and stuff like that. 
And when you go into your sequence, you can render specific areas, render effects in work area. That's what that means. This is the work area bar. This right here, when you export video, let me just go here, export media, right down here, work area. Now I can export just what's in that work area. That's the other reason I like having this little work bar area turned on. I can just export little segments if I need to. So anyways, like I said, this little drop down here gives you access to that along with some other stuff. There's so many different ways to get into menus. You can see these little lines, like I said, these little lines are menus right here. So if you're ever curious how to access options in these little panels, that's how you do it. But with Premiere, you have preferences. This takes you into a whole slew of options for defaults on transitions and stuff like that. And for me, I like my video transitions to be 0.8 frames. Wait, is that right? Eight eight frames and my audio transit. Oh wait, no, wait, what am I doing here? My audio transitions default. I think that's good. So let's just double check that. So that's my little audio transition. I like to have that set up as my audio transition as 0 0.08 and my video transition is eight frames. It's just what I want. Let's see here. Dissolve. All right. We add that. Yep. So that's what I just personally do. I just do 0.8 and 8 for that. Just a little preference. And these are all things that are gonna save within this workspace. So that's the reason I'm showing you this. And you have other options, and this goes into stuff like where you want all this stuff. This is just like playback, memory, all this stuff. So this is something else just to check where you wanna have your media cache. I'm not gonna get into that because I don't have it the most efficient way. You should be rendering to a separate drive and stuff like that. I don't do that, and so I don't wanna show you the wrong way. but. That's something to watch in another video somewhere else. So we're almost there. I think everything's just about set up. The one thing right now is when I scroll my mouse wheel, when I'm doing this, you can see what's happening. It's just stretching those. I personally don't like that. So we're gonna go in here, project settings. This is so weird, some of this stuff. Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong menu. This is, this is where I get confused. See that, this is your scratch disk. So if you ever wanna know where your scratch disks are supposed to be for saving to different folders and stuff like that? This is where you'd access those. File, project settings, project manager, something completely different. So many different menus, Premiere, why? Okay, let's go into preferences again. So under the general tab, we're gonna just hang out here. We, we switched our video transition to eight, audio transition to 0 0.08. And now we wanna do the scrolling wheel right here. Timeline mouse scrolling, I wanna actually do horizontal. For me, this is the most efficient. So then I can hit plus and minus, zoom out, and I can just roll back and forth on that timeline. That's personally how I like that. And sometimes I'll stretch this smaller and pull this timeline over and get as much out of that room. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm working on a laptop computer. So this screen is a little compressed and a little smaller than it normally would be on a larger monitor. But this is the basic layout that I have I think that's just about everything. Let's take a look. We have this, this, we have our effects over here. Looks good. Let's go into workspace and let's save this. We could save changes to this workspace. I am because this is, I'm the only one that uses this computer. But if you have multiple people using your computer, you could save it as a new workspace and give it a name. So I'm gonna just save this as the workspace. Save changes, boom. So now this is my editing layout. There it is. There's so many options here with Premiere. I don't understand their menu layout because look, this is something here on the timeline. See this little gear? This is a whole other slew of options for just your timeline. So you have your timeline options here, but then you can also access it through the little toolbox. I don't know, that's just weird, it's weird. That's just scratching the surface of all the tricks and tips for using Premiere Pro. I wanted to show you my personal layout and why I set it up like this. This works for me, it's very efficient, and it just, I think it makes sense. There's a whole slew of shortcuts and tricks and tips and all kinds of stuff that you can learn with Premiere Pro. And instead of me telling you all that stuff, I wanna check out Video Revealed. Colin Smith teaches all kinds of amazing tricks and tips. I've learned a lot from watching his tutorials. I subscribe just because there's just these little things that I wouldn't even think to search that he talks about. And even just today, I was watching a video about bins and I didn't realize you can have search bins. If you don't know what search bins are, check out his channel, he goes into that, it's awesome. I hope this was helpful, I hope you can start editing more efficiently and you can start to understand what Premiere is even all about, and if not, Video Revealed will definitely hopefully fill in all the blanks for everything else. Knob Top, go make something.